this is one of our native gardening plant traditional one and uh, it's a very popular in the older gardens and also it's there even now but uh, uh, widely used and uh, this being one of our uh, native uh, species it's good for our uh, local environment and insects and all it's a uh, botanical name is uh, combretum indicum combretum indicum and then uh, it's also called uh, commonly as rangoon uh, creeper rangoon creeper and it's a native of india burma thailand and uh, it occurs all the way up to philippines it seems so widespread in the tropical areas and uh, it's a very very hardy plant it's a ligneous vine that means that stems are woody and uh, the flowers when they open they are white the fresh ones like uh, this is just opened almost white then it becomes a uh, more pale pink uh, on the second day gradually it becomes pink and then on the third day it becomes uh, red and uh, when it ripen when it opens up it has a it's a uh, upright then on the second day it starts drooping a bit and then finally it uh, looks downwards this flowers before uh, it's fully ready and then it falls off like all these you can see they're all completely facing downwards and uh, it's found in thickets and secondary forests western ghats and all western ghats lower himalayas and all kind of places tropical areas and uh, another interesting uh, thing about this plant it seems this uh, this flowering uh, that color change is connected to attracting uh, pollinators so in the early part of when it opens and it uh, freshly bloomed uh, that white color so that it opens up in the evening to attract these uh, hawk moths and uh, those insects that have a long tongue to send the uh, to suck up that uh, nectar and then on the second day it becomes a uh, little pinkish and the third day as it becomes red it attracts more uh, bees and the little birds and all for that pollination then also it's very persistent once you plant it you can chop it and then uh, trim it and all regularly and the life of the plant is uh, in the root underneath so even if you chop it quite completely it will still come back from the root new uh, stems will come out and it will reemerge and it doesn't need much watering support and all it can uh, manage quite well on its own in very hostile places also i have seen it does quite well and uh, you can plant it in uh, places where there is no uh, 
not much water and all also in fact without any watering it can survive just on rainfall so the little bees are only going towards the pink flowers they're not going to the red so as i was telling this color change is uh, meant to as a signal for the uh, birds and all uh, birds and insects and all to so that they can uh, it, it they can get a message that uh, it's a signal that there is enough uh, plenty of uh, nectar so it's a indicator for nectaring nectar uh, supply and uh, now i can see these little bees are only going to that uh, this uh, second day flowers that is already half pink and uh, half white and uh, these bees are these little bees are not at all going towards the red uh, flowers so that's one more thing about it So this is an excellent plant for our uh, biodiversity gardens, native gardens and all. It's very versatile. It can be climbed on to all kind of uh, trees and all and uh, little shrubs. And it can uh, go up to about uh, 30, 40 feet and all height. Climb very nicely and then it, uh, it can be used as a hedge plant and it can be used as a... On the walls you can cover it, you can climb it on to buildings and uh, profuse flowering goes on for long periods of the year. So in every way it's a good plant for our native gardens, native gardeners and biodiversity gardens and all this. That is a little bit about this species. And then uh, I'm covering it from somebody's compound wall. So it's climbed on very nicely. And I've grown this also for many years. It's a wonderful plant. If you don't have it, go and get it. And then those cuttings also, it's very easy to propagate from cuttings. So all in all, uh, uh, excellent plant, flowering plant.